All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now up to the fifth and final part of my optics lecture. And we are going to first recap a little bit about converging and diverging lenses, and then we will compare lenses to mirrors before we move on to double lenses and mirrors, okay? So right now we have an example that we're going to talk about based on what we've done already. And behind me is a converging lens, also known as a convex lens, they say that the focal length is 17 centimeters. Now, I'm first going to draw a quick diagram, and then I'm going to do this mathematically. When you do a diagram, as I mentioned before, always draw a quick line down the center of the lens first. Label F 2F versus F prime and 2F prime. Now, how do I know, again, which side is F and which side is 2F? Well, I'm sorry, which side is F and which side is F prime? Well, just remember, this is a converging lens. That means that when light strikes the lens, it bends inward. So it actually bends towards the focal point. So this has to be the main focal point because that's where the light actually goes. Now, before I finish drawing, I'm also going to label this is where my eye is, which means that wherever my eye is, wherever the light actually is going, that's the real side or the positive side. The other side will be the virtual side. Now, even before I draw my second line, which is straight to the center of the lens, I should already know where the image is going to be. In this case, I already do know because it's on 2F prime. If it's on 2F prime, the image is automatically going to be on 2F. So I draw this straight to the center. I can see that my image is right over there. It's the exact same distance as the object from the lens, so therefore it has to be the same size. And because it is upside down, it is real as well. Okay? Now, mathematically, let's just list everything out. Okay? They say the focal length is 17 centimeters. And notice that the focal length is on the positive side. So therefore, when I write that down as my given, I know that F is equal to 17 centimeters. Now, mathematically, this is, go this is going to work exactly the same as the mirror equation, except for one thing, okay? I know that the object is on the virtual side, is on the negative side. But for our purposes, except for one tiny small exception, which we'll get to later on, DO, or the distance of the object, is always positive, okay? Always make DO positive, except for this one exception, which we'll get to later on. So DO, which is 34 centimeters in front of the lens, and then they ask us to calculate where is the image going to be, and calculate, not the, well, they say size, but really we're going to calculate the magnification of the image. So if we're looking for di, we're going to start with the exact same formula as before. 1 over do plus 1 over di equals to 1 over f. So 1 over f is going to equal to 1 over, sorry, my mistake. 1 over di is going to equal to 1 over 17 centimeters minus 1 over 34 centimeters. Now, using common denominators, this is really the same thing as 2 over 34, which means that di, 1 over di, is equal to 1 over 34 centimeters, and therefore di is equal to 34 centimeters. Notice that is a positive value. Of course, if it's a positive value, that means it is a real image, which corresponds with the drawing that we did. Now, if I want to solve for magnification, magnification, just like before, is high over ho. But I don't have the height of the image. I don't have the height of the object. So rather than using h, I'm going to use negative di over do. So in this case, it's going to equal to negative 34 centimeters over 34 centimeters, which, of course, is equal to negative 1. 
which means that it's negative one times larger than before, or smaller in this case, because, well, it doesn't really change. It means it's exactly the same, but the negative sign means that it is inverted. If this were a concave lens instead, okay, a concave lens is a fancy way of saying a diverging lens. Let's redo this problem. If this were a diverging lens, how exactly would this change? Well, we would still start by drawing a line down the middle, but because this is a diverging lens, you have to remember that the main focal point is on the virtual side. How do I know that? Well, the fact is when light travels and strikes a diverging lens, I know it's going to split off. It's going to diverge. It's not going to go down in towards the focal point. It's going to go away from the center line. So in this case, I'll have to backtrack to see exactly where it hits, meaning the F prime, of course, is on the other side. My second line, I'm not even going to bother with 2F because this is very straightforward, but my second line is straight through the center of the lens itself. meaning that my object would be virtual and smaller. Okay, positive side, negative side. I would have done this before normally, before solving a problem. And if you think about it, remember, when you're looking through a diverging lens, like my glasses, okay, you're going to see a smaller virtual image. If we were to actually list out our givens for this problem, the focal point, since it's on the negative side, would be negative 17 centimeters. DO, as I said before, is always, always positive, except for one small exception. So if we're solving for DI now in this case, we should see that 1 over DI is equal to 1 over negative 17 centimeters minus 1 over 34 centimeters. Now again, just using a little bit of common denominators, we get 1 over di is equal to negative 3 over 34 centimeters, which is not as clean as before, but not really a big deal, because when you flip it, di is simply equal to negative 34 over 3, or the same thing as 11.33, negative 11.33 centimeters. Let's get a negative sign, okay, which corresponds with our drawing, that the image is on the negative side or the virtual side. And if I were to do a magnification with this, all right, negative 11.33. So magnification, we go to negative di over do, so equal to negative times negative 11.33. 3, 3 divided by DO, which was 34 centimeters, and you would get an approximate answer of about, I'm just negative one third. Actually, that's exactly what it would be. So it would be exactly one third the size, of, oh, sorry, I forgot the two negative signs canceled out. That's positive one third which should make sense because it is an upright image. So the magnification is actually positive one-third times the original size. So converging and diverging lens are straightforward as long as you remember what's positive, what's negative. Okay? And to recap all of lenses and all mirrors, let's compare lenses and mirrors a little bit because you'll see that they follow almost exactly the same rules. If we first talk about diverging mirrors or lenses, okay? Because that one's easier to look at. Here I have a diverging lens. No matter where I put the object, you can see that I'm always going to form a virtual smaller image. The focal point is going to be on the virtual side as the eye is over here. And it's always 
going to work out with a nice simple drawing. If you take a look at if you take a look at let's see if this still works. Diverging mirrors. Okay. Now remember the eye is on this side because when you're looking at a mirror and an object, so positive real is where all the light rays are actually going, and negative is on the other side. Now, notice again, no matter where I move my object, I always get a n virtual smaller image, okay? The focal point is on the negative side. So, basically, they follow the exact same rules. You just have to be careful about your drawing itself, okay? Mirrors reflect, lenses refract. So, with diverging, it's always virtual and smaller, and they have a negative focal point. So with a convex mirror, I'm about to draw that again, F is on the negative side. With a diverging lens, F, again, is on the negative side. F prime would be on the positive side. Okay? And based on our rules, parallel, then through F. In this case, it can't go through, so it reflects off. Okay, sorry about the small break. But again, with a diverging lens, when you have, it first goes parallel, then it refracts instead of reflecting, and it ref refracts away, and you have to bring it back through the main focal point. Notice the similarities between the mirrors and the lenses. The second line, as I said before, is easy, as long as you follow the rules. In this case, we're going to draw through the center, straight through. So we literally draw a red line. And normally, of course, it bounces back, but we're going to bring it back through. And where the two lines converge, here is my image with the diverging lens, all I'm going to do is draw through the center of the lens itself, straight through. Where the two lines converge, I have my virtual smaller image. Okay, so notice the similarities between convex mirrors and diverging lenses, but one reflects, one refracts. If I'm talking about converging mirrors or lenses, okay, now, converging, you have to remember, there's a bunch of different things that can happen. A converging mirror is your makeup mirror, and it shows you magnified and larger, virtual and larger, when it's up close, and it's upside down when it's further away. But same thing with the, with the magnifying glass. When you hold a magnifying glass up close to something, it's magnified and larger. When you look at something that's far away, the, ob the object appears upside down. So if we... Look at this animation over here. Okay. So you'll see that when the object is being held close to the mirror itself, it automatically creates a virtual larger image. Okay. This is the positive side. Your eye is over here. This is the negative side. So as long as you're up close to the mirror, you're always going to see a virtual larger image. If you look at a converging lens, like a magnifying glass, you'll see that when the object is in front of the focal point, close to the lens, okay, in this case the eye is on the other side, positive, negative, positive focal point, we have the same exact situation happening. Okay, so up close, virtual and larger. And as soon as you bring it back further away, you're going to create a real image. Now that real image can be larger or smaller. It depends on how close you are to the focal point. In this case, F prime. The further and further away you are, the smaller the image. 
the closer and closer you get to F prime, the larger and larger the larger the image until it hits infinity at focal point, meaning no image is being created. So between 2F prime and F prime, that's always going to be larger, just like with a concave mirror. Okay? And this is, of course, is reflecting, not refracting. But the further away you get from the focal point, the smaller the image is, the closer you get, the larger and larger and larger the image is, until when you're on the focal point, you have no image because it's at infinity. Okay? So, again, notice the similarities between the two. They follow the same rules, except that one reflects, one refracts. So, if I were just to recap that briefly, when in front of the focal point, it's always going to make a virtual larger image. When it's behind the focal point, it's always going to make a real image. And that image, of course, the size of the image depends on how close the object is to the focal point. And the fact is it also ha always has a positive focal point. So just to recap with a few drawings, When you're further away from the focal point, parallel, then through F, through F, then parallel, you get a nice, small, real image. The main focal point now is over here on the other side. So that means parallel, then through F, straight to the center. Again, a real, smaller image. But real means it actually goes through the lens itself. Okay? If it's held up close, it would be a virtual image. And now let's move on to double lenses. Okay, double lenses and mirrors are a little bit tricky, but as long as you remember a couple basic rules, it's very, very straightforward. Okay. So here we have our first two lenses. Let's take a look. Okay. Now, the most important thing that you guys have to remember about double lenses is that you have to treat the image of the first as the object of the second. Okay? If you remember to treat the image of the first as the object of the second, so we see our two lenses here. Notice that when they do their ray tracing, parallel then through F, straight to the center, they create the first image over here. Now that image, of course, is the object of the second lens. So now, even though it's upside down, it's going to, we're still going to follow through. We go parallel and through F, straight through the center of the lens, and where they converge, that's where the final image is, okay? But you have to be careful. The distance of the image of the first, di1, okay? That's where it's produced. That's not the same thing as the object distance for the second lens because over here, this will be the distance of the object from the second lens. So if our total distance between the two were 80 centimeters, okay, let's say we solve di1 to equal to 35 centimeters, as an example, then do2 would automatically have to be 80 minus 35, which gives you 45 centimeters. Okay, so you have to remember, whenever you solve your first distance for the image, that's not the same value as the object distance. Now, this is just a brief YouTube clip of Wolf from Alpha. But all they're showing you is based on changing the focal length, okay, you create an image from the first lens. 
it's going really fast, but you guys can always pause and rewind this and look at this yourself. But the fact is, no matter where it is, it's always going to work out. Now, let me just rewind that for a little bit because there's one interesting example I want you guys to take a look at. Okay, stop right there. All right. Now, remember before I had mentioned there's only one time where DO might be negative. Okay? This is that one example. Now, when you look at this animation over here, let me see if I can just move this up. Yeah, I can. All right, good. And let me magnify it a little bit. Okay, I know it's a little bit blurry, but bear with me, okay? Now, if I were to actually work this out with the first lens only, we should be able to see that it's parallel, then through F. The second line has to go straight through the center of the lens. Wait, as you can see, the image goes past the second lens, okay? Now, that doesn't actually mean that this image is going to actually form there, but that's where the image of the first lens should be. Now, if this is where you calculate DI1 to be, okay, that means DO2 when measured to the second lens, this being DO2, that's going to be a negative value. Okay, so DO will only be negative if the image goes past the second lens. So if the first image goes past the second lens or mirror, because it could, it could be a mirror instead, then DO2 will be negative, and we would treat it as such, okay? We'll do a practice time with it later, but just keep that in mind, okay? So that's the only time DO will ever, ever, ever be negative for us. So let's actually do a problem together then. Now, this is the same image as above, of course, but we're actually going to solve this mathematically and show how everything works out. Actually, let's just copy this into our smart into the smartboard program itself. And here we go. So, over here, we have our we have our drawing. We they say that the objects have is placed 60 centimeters in front of the first lens. Okay. Now I ha can approximate this, knowing that the focal length of the first is 20 centimeters. That means if I just draw a line on the middle, one, two, three, the object starts off around there, and that's 60 centimeters. So if I start drawing my lines parallel through F, straight to the center, I see my first image over there. If I follow that up with my second lens, now notice this is be, it just did not go past the second lens, so this is still a positive DO. If I go, sorry, I'm trying to find down the middle, parallel then through F2, straight to the center, and there's my final image. Okay. If I'm going to work this out mathematically, we just follow the same rules, and it's very straightforward. So, which means that with the very first lens, I'll do 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals to 1 over F. So 1 over DI is equal to 1 over 20 centimeters minus 1 over 60 centimeters. So using a little bit of common denominator, 3 over 60 minus 1 over 60 
1 over di is equal to 2 over 60 centimeters. Or in other words, di is 30 centimeters. And if you look, that kind of corresponds with our drawing, how it's just a little bit past the first focal point. So now, knowing that this over here is 30 centimeters, that means the distance of the image to the second lens has to be 50 centimeters, because the total has to equal to 80. So now, keep it, keeping that in mind, let's erase this first work. And now do the same formula, 1 over di plus 1 over do equals to 1 over f. But now we're doing this for the second lens. So 1 over di, 2, is equal to 1 over 25 centimeters minus 1 over 50 centimeters. So that's using common denominator, that's 2 over 50. So di2 is equal to 50 centimeters. And as we can see, our drawing of our final image is about twice the length of the focal point. So that's approximately correct. Okay. The drawing should always match up with your work. But how do I calculate the final magnification? Magnification is easy. You find the total magnification, I'll use capital M, by just multiplying all the magnifications that are there. Okay. So in this case, magnification, of course, is HI over HO, but we don't know any sizes. So we'll use negative DI1 over DO1 times negative DI2 over DO2. So if I plug in those numbers, I get negative DI1 was goes equals to negative 30 centimeters over 60 centimeters times negative di2, negative 50 centimeters over 20, over 50 centimeters. Negatives will cross out, and you end up with one half. Okay, so in this case, the magnification, the final magnification is one half, the size of the original object. Hopefully that was straightforward, but we can try, let's see, nope, I don't have any more examples right now. So, but we'll do more examples, of course, in class. So I just want to cover one last thing for this lecture, and that's about the idea of something called aberration. Okay, so we're done with double lenses and mirrors, so we'll move on to aberrations. An aberration simply means that the image does not quite come into focus because the lines are not actually all going through, going through the same focal point. And over here is something what we call spherical aberration. Now, spherical aberration means that when you actually have a curved mirror, it's only for mirrors, The focal point is actually slightly different based on wherever, whichever part of the mirror you're striking. So the lenses don't actually, the, the mirror doesn't actually focus everything exactly, exactly the same point. It's only slightly off. To correct that mistake, actually, um, what scientists usually use and what Archimedes used probably when he created his uh, death ray is he didn't actually use a spherical mirror. He probably used a parabolic mirror because a parabolic mirror corrects for any sort of spherical aberration. So whenever you hear talk about the Hubble telescope and the mirrors used inside the Hubble telescope, they always mention the use of parabolic mirrors because the parabolic mirror will focus the light from the stars at a certain point for them to take a picture of. So, so it's easily correctable. What's harder to correct is something is, is a problem that lenses have. Lenses have a problem called 
chromatic aberration, which I talked about briefly before at the very beginning of one of the lectures. And the chromatic aberration arises from the fact that every single color has a different index of refraction. The higher the frequency, the higher the index of refraction, meaning it bends more. As you guys can see, red, when red light travels through, it bends the least. And there's the focal point for red. But when blue travels through, it bends more than red does. So chromatic aberration means that we that the focal point changes based on the color. If you look in photographs, um, if you zoom in a lot on photographs, whenever you see any sort of fringing of effects around clouds or buildings, or whenever there's a bright light source, it looks like there's a slight rainbow pattern. That rainbow pattern is due to the fact that there's chromatic aberration. To fix chromatic aberration, usually expensive lenses will probably mix a converging lens with a diverging lens. Because of the converging lens and a diverging lens, what actually happens is while the, while the light sources might be converging at different points, by having them go through a diverging, lines, diverging lens at the same time, they will diverge out more than before also, meaning that they'll come back together at around the same point approximately. Okay, so expensive lenses, especially with cameras and stuff, will use actually two lenses to take any sort of image. And that covers all of geometric optics. The next part will, of course, be about me going through examples of AP problems with you guys.